Hello Bugs here, my name is Kate, this is my channel Chapter Kate. Today I'm going to be talking about a controversial subject. And hopefully you don't all hate me after this video. <gasps> I wanted to talk a little bit about Harry Potter. Harry Potter seems to be just a phenomenon that I haven't really seen with any other book series. It just... It seems to just take people's lives over. I see people get tattoos, which is, I mean, that's a, a lot of things, but like, there's a lot of Harry Potter tattoos. There's an entire wizarding world. There's, you know, like an amusement park. There are all these references that most of the world understands about Harry Potter. And I really can't watch a video on like life-changing books or um, favorite series without hearing Harry Potter mentioned multiple times. Um, Harry Potter seems to have shaken you know, the literary world, and this is not new. Um, Harry Potter's been around a while. I, I remember the first time I ever heard about Harry Potter, I was in like fourth grade, I think, and um, because I grew up in the Bible Belt, I was immediately told, do not read this book. If someone tells you to read this book, don't read it because it's evil. So, I didn't get to read Harry Potter until college, and then I read like all of them really quick and I, I sped through them. But thinking about Harry Potter and hearing it over and over and over and over and over again in so many videos has me kind of wondering why do people like Harry Potter so much? What is it about Harry Potter that has everybody out of their minds? So that's what this video is going to be about. It's just going to be about why do people love Harry Potter so much? Of course, you don't have to have a reason to love something. And I guess some would argue it's just that good, but that's, I like to study things. I like to break things apart and, you know, think about them more. So that's what I'm gonna do. The first thing I think that really draws people into the Harry Potter series is that it shows an escape for an average individual that may be in a rather stuck looking situation. At the beginning of the series you find out Harry Potter is an orphan. He lives with his aunt and uncle and his cousin and they all treat him like crap. It's pretty much an abusive, neglectful situation over which he has absolutely no control. And I think that almost anyone can say that there's at least one point in their life where they felt like they didn't have control over their surroundings and their situation. But he is given an escape to that. He, you know, he gets a letter from Hogwarts and he gets to escape. And I feel like that's something that most of us look for in books in general somewhere to escape. And it's to read about a character who finds an escape from a situation that seems impossible to escape from. I guess I would just say it gives us hope. You know, it, it makes us, you know, look at it and be like, oh, maybe I will get somewhere. I know it's a fantasy, but there, you know, there might be a chance if Harry Potter can get out from under the frickin' stairs with his douchebag family, maybe I can get out of this job that I hate. Maybe I can get out of this slump I'm in. Maybe I get out of this depression I'm in. Whatever, you know, you're stuck in, it makes you feel like you can kind of get out of it some way. Now, it does kind of place sort of importance on an external notice of control, you know, having a situation come to you rather than you taking charge of your situation. But, um, you know, throughout the series, he does gain more power over his situation, so... Not gonna go into that psychology right now. The next thing, of course, I wanna talk about is the chosen one trope. This one, I, I mean, Harry Potter, of course, has the chosen one trope. He's literally called the chosen one. You know, I don't know if the trope was named after Harry Potter, but I feel like it might have been. I don't really remember. I haven't done that research, so. But the chosen one trope is something that speaks to a lot of us. Cause there's a point in everyone's lives where they kind of feel like they're you know, the main character and everyone else is kind of an NPC and you have a hard time sort of seeing, you know, that other people are also people. Um, of course, we develop in adolescence and, you know, young adulthood, we develop, you know, more and more empathy for other people, usually. Um, however, there's a point in our lives where we kind of feel like we're invincible and we're like sort of different. Something is very different about us. And we are all very different, um, but we're also very much alike. And around, you know, adolescence and young adulthood, we feel like often something is very special about us that we're gonna get you know discovered or we're gonna something is you know your situation's not quite the same as everybody else's something about you is set apart from a lot of people a lot of people feel that way um and i think the chosen one trope really speaks to that part of our minds that some of us ignore some of us acknowledge um but it really does speak to that part of our minds harry potter also has this fascinating way of combining something very whimsical with something very severe and dire and I think that that draws us all in because it's not so silly that we get you know over it really quick but it's also not so dire that we're emotionally exhausted you know we have a little bit of here you know we have a little bit of both and I think that that makes it more bearable and more um easy to swallow a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down in the most delightful way 
Can you believe I didn't get cast as Mary Poppins? Sorry, I'm a little bitter about musicals in general. Sorry. Moving on. Now, there's also some familiarity um, in the setup of the Harry Potter sort of series. There's also the school setting, which a lot of people enjoy. What I enjoy a school setting is because you know how to visualize a school setting. Like, you, you can see a school setting. You know, you can um, sort of keep up with how big the world is. Even though the Wizarding World is huge, most of the story takes place in this school setting. And so you don't have to keep up with a ton of locations. You can just keep up with this one location. But even so, there's, you know, evidence in the books that says, oh, these stairs always are changing and there's magic and blah, blah, blah. So even so, you don't feel like you have to keep every single detail in your head the whole time because there is some vagueness going on there that kind of is comfortable for me personally at least. I don't know. And it also feels like the books as they go through the series as Harry's getting older and he's getting sort of um you know more into school and he's getting more into the scary situation that he's dealing with Voldemort's noseless face. There is a sense of each book is a little bit more mature than the one before it and there not only does Harry develop but the series itself develops, you know, and when, you know, at my age, when it, you know, it was coming out and everything, even though I wasn't reading it at that age, most of my friends were reading it at that age, and they grew up the same time Harry grew up, they got, they grew up alongside him, and that was, you know, it created something that was very important to them that they could kind of cling on to, because I'm growing up, he's growing up, you know, my world's getting more real, his world's getting more real, and so you could really relate to that aspect of things. I also think something that J.K. Rowling did really well in her books is that um, some series really feel like it's just one continuous long story, but this series really does well at, you know, creating each individual story as its own thing, but it is all still working towards that same plot. You're never really too far from the plot, and I do like that Voldemort's still sneaking his little butt back in every now and then, you know, like that. But that is a lot of series. That is, you know, a basic, you know, for a series you want to keep the story going while, you know, still adding something new. Like, there is going to be some resolution at the end of this, but there's also the little not resolution because we're not in the last book of the series yet. And the last thing I really want to talk about with this topic um, is the one that I feel the most excited about. I think this is the reason that I really like Harry Potter. But I think people love to be able to label themselves. I know a lot of us say, oh, I don't like labels, but a lot of people like labels because a label helps us feel connected to something and not so alone, makes us feel like we have a sense of community in something. And I think with the four houses that are present in Hogwarts, it allows someone to see themselves in something there and connect with others that are the same way or, you know, feel like you have a sense of identity within this world um, because everybody knows those quirky, smart people, you know, the, the Ravenclaws. Everyone knows those brave, confident people everyone knows those people that are you know so in driven that they will do what they need to do to get what they want to get and everybody knows those faithful individuals that will always be by your side and that are just value friendship and they're happy above everything else so I feel like the biggest part of Harry Potter that I think everyone really connects with is the houses and the fact that you can place yourself in that universe in some way just with your personality you know you can say I fit here and this is where I belong right here and even if your personality doesn't fit where you want it to be there's that little out that you know Harry could have gone to Slytherin or he could have gone in Gryffindor Hermione could have gone in Ravenclaw or she could have gone in Gryffindor but there was an aspect of um, they do get to choose that that's where the internal lotus control is that's where they kind of have some power over their own destiny they get to kind of pick where they go and I think that's really cool too because it, it, it sort of emphasizes the idea that you know you are this you were created this way you grew up this way but you also have choices to make in life and those choices are going to affect you just as much as who you intrinsically are as a human being affects you and I think that is the biggest thing to me that really attracts me to the Harry Potter series and I don't know if that's you know the same for everybody but I feel personally that that is a huge part of the attraction that comes along with Harry Potter so I hope you enjoyed this video um I know it's a little bit of a weird discussion but I I enjoyed it myself so hope you enjoyed it Oh, am I back to the finger guns? If you would like more of this junk, subscribe below. Bye! Dripping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night I feel the soldiers coming, I'm done pulling up a fight